Good day geographers and welcome to today's course lesson about depositional landforms. We're going to look at spits and bars in depth today. My favourite spit is at Hengisbury Head. It's got a really beautiful walk along the base all the way along the salt marsh. You can play in the sand dunes at the end and then when you come back if you're really lucky there's a train that will take you back. For today's lesson all you need is a pen, a pencil, a calculator and a piece of paper. In a second, I'm going to ask you to pause and take a moment to get everything you need and clear away all those distractions so you can give me your full attention this lesson. Off you go and I'll see you in a sec. Good work. Right, jot down the title, Depositional Landforms number two, Spits and Bars. And if you can underline that for me, it'll look super neat. Spits and bars are depositional landforms. So let's just recap for a couple of seconds. What is deposition? Deposition is when material being transported by the sea is dropped. And this is normally due to a loss in energy. When you're tired and you're carrying lots of things, you would deposit them. We also need to know longshore drift. And we had looked at how that is the zigzag movement of sediment along the coastline. Let's have a look at that as a diagram. Waves swash up beach, and that angle is determined by the prevailing wind. The waves carry sediment with them. Backwash returns the water back to sea, straight back down due to gravity. As that continues, the sediment is moved further and further along the coast as longshore drift. Longshore drift goes in the direction of the prevailing wind. Now we know these important key terms, let's get on with how spits form. Let's have a look at an aerial image of a spit. This spit is Hengisbury Head. Hengisbury Head here, as I go around the outside, is a tall crop of land. The beach has come from Bournemouth all the way along this coastline and it gets to Hengisbury Head. Then, at the change in direction, the beach has continued and at this edge of the land, it continues to be transported through longshore drift and it's building up in the sea. Behind this spit, you can see that we have a salt marsh, this section here. Here it is on an OS map, so the same area. This section is the land, and here we have the beach extending from the land out to sea. It hasn't gone all the way across because we've got a river flowing down and that current stops it from filling the gap. A spit. Can you get this definition jotted down for me? It is a long, narrow finger of sand or shingle jutting out into the sea from the land. How do spits form? The prevailing wind blows at an angle to the coastline. Waves move up the beach as swash and down the beach as backwash. This transports material along the coast as longshore drift. When the coastline changes direction, longshore drift continues. Over time, deposition occurs, creating a spit. The spit will continue to grow over time. Sometimes there's a crosswind which creates a recurved end. So the prevailing wind was southwesterly, but sometimes you will get the wind going in a different direction. And because the sand is not stable, it can be blown at the end to make a recurved end. That spit will continue to grow and continue to grow. The area behind the spit is sheltered. The spit is blocking that area from the wind. So deposition occurs. This can result in a salt marsh forming. Let's have a think. Which process would you not include when explaining the formation of a spit? Five seconds.
it is weathering. So we need longshore drift there. Swash makes up longshore drift. And deposition is vital because we have to deposit that sand to make the spit. Put these statements into the correct order. Pause the video so you've got enough time to do this. Jot down the letters for me now. Let's see how you got on. Did you get C first? Longshore drift transports sediment along the coastline. The coastline changes direction. The spit grows out into the sea. And that salt marsh is going to form behind the spit as it is sheltered. So hopefully you've got jotted down C, B, A, D. Time for you now to copy and label the sketch of a spit. This does not need to be a work of art. Draw in pencil, simple outlines. On it, I would like you to label direction of longshore drift, prevailing wind, salt marsh, spit, change in direction of the coast, swash, backwash, recurved end and cross wind. Pause the video now, press play and join me to check your answers when you're done. Some beautiful diagrams have been drawn. Lovely use of pencil. Prevailing wind down in that bottom corner. Swash and backwash, they're moving the sediment in the direction of the longshore drift. We then have a change in the direction of our coastline, which means that that spit forms out to sea. We've got salt marsh behind it. And then we've got this arrow here to show the crosswind because that crosswind can make that recurved end. Hopefully you've got all of those. If you need to pause to add any that you're missing, do so now. Field work time. Here's my spit. We've gone out, we've collected some data and we've found that the sediment size at site A and the sediment size at site B, so down at the end of the spit, are different. I would like you to calculate the mean sediment size of site B. I've given you the mean of site A, which is 11.2. Secondly, I want you to suggest why the mean sediment size is smaller at location B. Put those brains to the test. Pause the video and complete your task. So lots of hard thinking for that challenge. Number one, mean sediment size at B is. First thing we had to do was add up all those data sets, six, two, three, four, and two. That gave us a total of 17. We divided it by the sample size of five, giving us a mean of 3.4 centimeters. Question two, the sediment size is smaller at B because, and you can have either of these as correct, longshore drift can carry the light material much further and the sediment that has been transported further is likely to have been eroded more through attrition. So by the time the sediment's got to B, there's been more time for erosion, so the sediment particles are smaller and either of those would be correct. Good work. Let's transport our learning on a little bit further to now have a look at how bars form. Here's a photo of a bar, and this bar is at Slapton Lee. You can't actually see the whole of the bar because it's such a large landform. Here it is on the map, the same one. You can see that we've got a bar that stretches over two kilometres from Torcross to Slapton Sands. A bar is when a spit has grown across a bay, trapping a lagoon behind it. So pause now to get that definition written down. Let's have a look at how bars form. Here's our spit that we've looked at earlier. So the spit grows across a bay. When it joins two headlands, it becomes a bar. It's created a bar of sand across that bay. 
The area of water behind it is called a lagoon. If there's a river with a strong current coming through that bay, the bar is unlikely to form because that strong current is gonna wash any of the material that's been deposited away. So you tend to only have bars forming if you either don't have a river coming into the bay or if it's very slow. Let's test you. What's the definition of a bar? Five seconds, A or B. And you should have got B. So a spit that has grown across a bay joining two headlands. Tell me what the key word was for definition A. Yes, so A was a spit, well done. What would stop a spit turning into a bar? Three seconds to make your choice. It is a river with a strong current that would wash away the sand and stop deposition happening. Your main task today is to explain how depositional landforms are created along the coast. It's a four mark question. In your answer, I would like you to be successful by including processes. Those processes words like swash, backwash, deposition, transportation. I'd like you to write a step-by-step -step sequence. So use words to signpost. First, this happens, then that happens. Next, gradually. For a challenge, to get the very, very best answer, if you mention a process like longshore drift, you should define it or explain what it means in brackets. I'd like you to tackle this question now, so get ready to press pause. If you feel like you need some more support, if you wait a few more seconds, a writing frame will appear to help you. But I really think you're going to be able to do this without it, so give it a go for me. Good luck. Excited to see how you got on. Get ready to tick them off. Depositional landforms such as spits and bars form along our coast. Spits form when the prevailing wind blows at an angle to our coastline. Swash and backwash transport sediment along the coast in a zigzagged movement called longshore drift. At a change in the direction of the coastline, this continues and over time, deposition occurs, creating a spit. Eventually, if this spit grows and joins two headlands, it will become a bar. So, four marks for this question. I wanted to see your keywords and hopefully, if you've put longshore drift or swash or backwash with their definition in brackets, then I am going to be super impressed. Well, we're done. And I've got to say, I really think you raised the bar in this lesson with your learning. We've had a look today at spits and bars. We know they're both depositional landforms and they've been created by longshore drift. As waves swash up the beach, backwash down, swash, backwash, swash, backwash, that sediment is transported along the coast to create a spit and that can grow into a bar if it goes across two headlands. Let's make sure we transport all this amazing learning forward. I need you to click onto the next page and spend a few minutes completing your quiz so you can show me how much you've learned. Deposit all that amazing learning right now. I look forward to seeing how you've got on. Thanks very much for your time today and I look forward to you joining me soon as we move on to look at an example of the Dorset coast and all its stunning landforms. Have a great day today.